Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Elders for the Global Evangelistic Ministries. So glad to be here with you on another Sunday afternoon service. I am excited about what the Lord has for us. He's about to share with us. He, I, I want a fresh download. You know, have you ever wanted a fresh download of something good? Amen. Some new music, some new, some new, uh, some new uh, tools, some new software, some new equipment. Have you ever wanted a good download? But well, that's what I'm seeking right now. I'm seeking for a good download from the Lord. And even before we get into that, we're going to go into a word of prayer and allow the Lord to speak to our hearts. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that, that your desire towards us is good yes. and not bad. Yes. God, we thank you, Lord God, that there's something about us special that you saw fit to make us. Oh God, I thank you that you haven't abandoned us, you haven't left us alone, you haven't uh, put us in a position to, 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 to test us until we, until we just fail. But God, you chose, oh God, to love us. And even when we do fail, and even when we have failed, Lord, you chose to send your son, Lord. God, in everything at this time, Lord God. We're going to fix our hearts. We're going to set our minds. We're going to put ourselves in position, Lord Jesus, to trust that you care for us and that we can trust you with our lives. Every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I, today I'm going to talk about a very familiar passage of scripture. It's something that we all know we've heard, we've seen it uh, over and over again. Uh, you probably memorized it as a child. You probably learned it uh, some time ago. But, but it's a very familiar passage of scripture that, that um, it, it won't be so new to you. But the topic that I want to place it under is, is that I want to share with some that um, God is not mad at you. See, Sometimes we think that there are some things that we've done that are so bad and so hard and so uh, terrible that literally that God has changed his mind about who he see us to be. Uh, and, and so what happens is, is that we put ourselves in a position where literally if God is mad at me, then I'm not going to bother him. Uh, I heard somebody once say that when you all pray, you trouble God too much. And, 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 and sometimes we have to actually stop and recognize that truly God is not mad at you. Sometimes we think God is, you, you've heard it, uh, uh, if I go into the church, the church is going to blow up. If, if, I, if I do the, uh, if, I, if I find myself in a certain place, I, I might get struck by a lightning bolt. I, you, you know, those thoughts of God is ready to smite me, you know, to smack me down, to give me a good old fashioned slap because I've been bad, more bad than others. And, and literally what I want to encourage somebody today is, is that God is not mad at you. Have you ever found yourself in trouble? Yeah, uh, means that uh, you, you were not innocent in this cause, that you truly were guilty. Yeah, uh, and, and, and it was one of those moments where you knew that whatever the consequences were of what you were supposed to receive, you were supposed to get them, yeah? And nothing happened. I, I, I remember as a young child that there were moments where I knew that, that I was supposed to be disciplined by my parents. And I knew the discipline was going to be hard. It was strong. I, I, I had an uh, incident one time when I was a young boy where I found myself, I was being mischievous. I, I found myself doing some things that I ought not to do. And I don't know whether to say it because I don't want to encourage some young child to do what I did. But, but what I did was my mama had, uh, she had just went shopping. Amen. Not grocery shopping. Uh, she was preparing her Sunday best and she was getting her, 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 her nice wardrobe together for, to look nice at different times. And, and one day I came in with my thoughts wondering what to do and I came in the house and I went in one of the bedrooms and I began to play. You know what I'm talking about, Mama. You know what I'm talking about, right? And I began to play. And in my playing, something happened. Amen. I'll probably tell this story later, but I won't tell it today. Amen. I don't want to uh, encourage no young child to actually do what I did. And I began to play, and as I began to play, uh, something happened. And, and I, you know how you either spill something or something happens with these nice clothes, and you know you done messed up, and then you try to 
fix it up. You try to get it together. You try to put it back together. You try to make things go back like it was, as if you didn't do anything. And the last thing I thought, I said, whoops, I done messed up. I said, let me leave this room. <laughs> let me shut the door. <laughs> and maybe they won't recognize that something went wrong. Now, this is mama new clothes. This is mama, she, she ain't even wore the stuff yet. It's nice, it's nice, it's good, right? And I found myself leaving to go outside to play. Well, when I came back, the problem was so big, it was so large, that I saw lights flashing. I saw smoke blazing. And I just knew it wasn't my house. You hear me? I just knew it was not my house. And when I came to the front, they were all at my house. Police cars, flashing lights, and I was just doing my due, trying to play a little bit and something went wrong. And then I took myself outside to play. Well, I got back and I was wondering, I come in with the, the look of innocence. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but everybody knew what had happened. Everybody knew who had done it. Everybody knew what had went wrong. Now this was a time that I was supposed to get one of the worst disciplines ever, because it was my fault. I was guilty. It was me. Well, what the Lord does is, in those moments, I don't know what happened, but somehow or another, they didn't even talk to me for a few days. <laughs> Maybe they was a little angry and they would have went too far or maybe something would have happened. But, but somehow or another, they did not address the issue fully for a few days. I, I, I want to, and, and instead what they did was they, 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 they were kind of gentle with me. And I was pretty surprised at the response. I, I didn't believe that I deserved it. I didn't know why it was happening, but this is what was taking place. I, I want to encourage somebody today that, 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 that you did it, you done it, you're guilty, it happened, it took place, and uh, God ain't mad at you. You, you know the, the punishment. You know the consequences. You know exactly what you should be receive, receiving. You know exactly what you deserve at this time, but because of his mercy, God chooses not because of your actions and not because you're so good, but because of himself. Not to be mad at you. Amen. Psalms, nine, Psalms uh, the 23rd Psalms is a very familiar passage of scripture. We've all heard the 23rd Psalms, right? We've all heard the 23rd Psalms and the 23rd Psalm says what? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, David, the author of this, he was writing this psalm out of his experience in life. Because at some time in life, he had found himself with the responsibility for caring for sheep. Many years earlier. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 10 and 11. He had found himself that, that he had, he had found himself that, that he was responsible to know where they were, what was going on, and what took place. And he was responsible to make sure that they were well. Amen. And what ends up happening is, is that King David, what he does is, is that, that he, he, he cares for the sheep to the point that at one point in time, there was a lion that approached the sheep. 
And at all costs and at all risks to his very own life, he actually would not allow that lion to actually have their way with it. There, there was another time that there was a bear that had come to, 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 to gather the sheep. And King David, in his, his, in his desire to do what was right, he did not allow the bear to have his way with the sheep. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, uh, 16, verse 10 through 11, it said, Jesse had seven of his sons passed before Samuel. Now the prophet had found himself coming before Jesse and he was to anoint a king. And the Lord had, had he, he said, the Lord has not chosen these. This is what Samuel said to Jesse. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? And Jesse, the father, remembered. I wouldn't have even considered him to be up in the running. I wouldn't have considered him to be one of the ones you were looking for because you came here for such official business. And I know you're a man of God that I know you wasn't looking for the one that has the less ranking or authority. Or the one that we see to take on the jobs that nobody else wants. Jesse tells uh, Samuel, he says, there is still the youngest. Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him and we will not sit down until he arrives. I will not rest until King David comes. Amen. He, he didn't see the father didn't know that he was going to be King David. He didn't know that this is what the anointing was for, but he knew that there was something important about the prophet coming to his house and, the, and, and Samuel because the Lord had told him that these the ones you presented before me are not the ones. He said, I, I'm going, we're not going to rest. We're not going to sit down until he comes. Because Sometimes what God needs is he needs those that are to be of leadership that have actually gotten their hands dirty. I, I, I heard a man of God say the other day that if you in a leadership position, if you found yourself in leadership position and you ain't never really mopped the flow and you ain't never really had to do some of the hard stuff that really is usually somebody else's job, then oftentimes you're really not ready for leadership because oftentimes leadership calls you for stuff that you normally uh, may not want to do and others may not want to do. You may have to find yourself going in to make sure that things are in order, things are set in place uh, when it seems that uh, it, this is somebody else's job. Sometimes you may have to go in to do the nasty work. You hear me? You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes there's the dirty job that, that you got to go in as a leader that God would call you to do and, 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 and these are part of the things that causes us to be humbled but also causes us to actually lead with strength. One of the things with shepherds was is that they actually found themselves needing to care for, tend to the sheep on such a regular, consistent basis. They would have to find themselves actually making sure that the sheep were where they were supposed to be. That they would have to make sure that when the sheep were going through the birthing process, that the sheep, you know, some because sheep they would only basically rest about four hours a day. And so when a sheep was actually getting into that place of really going into birth, and they may have to go and assist to, to pull the baby land. Them out. They, they, they had to watch out for predators. They had to make sure things were where it was supposed to be. And so therefore, the sheep, the, the, the shepherd could not be prejudiced of which sheep they preferred. Now they raised the sheep kind of like pets. Have you, we all have had pets. We've had dogs, we've had cats, gerbils, hamsters, right, rabbits. Uh, we've had pets, and, 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 and you, when you get a pet, you kind of get one, and you kind of name it, and you, you kind of love on it a little bit, and you kind of let it know that, that, that you're close to me, and I'm close to you, and there's, there's a relationship that we actually have in, in what we're doing. And what happens is, is that David is actually speaking of God himself as being a shepherd. Amen? A caring shepherd. A loving shepherd, a compassionate shepherd. What does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. And what does he go on to say? I shall not want. 
Oh, he's tending for me. He's caring for me. He's watching over me. Sometimes we think that we've, you know, the shepherd, sometimes they let the sheep run a little bit further because they just need to get it out of their system. You understand? Uh, they, they, they're trying to get past the boundaries, but he, he ain't going to let them get too far. You understand? He's, he's going to watch from that distance to see where that sheep is really at. And, and just before it gets to where it's not supposed to be, he's going to draw it back in. Amen. The Lord is not mad at us. You, you hear me? Uh, sometimes some of the problems that we go through, some of the things that we go through is because we've created our own mess. We're saying, God, why did you let me go through this? God, why is this happening? And it's because you've created your own mess. Listen, for the things that we go through, the, thing, the, the decisions that we make, there are consequences to our actions. But I want to encourage somebody today that God is not mad at you. Now, this is King David. He's talking about the Lord being his shepherd. And, and Isaiah, you know, now Isaiah, the prophet, uh, he was a man. Uh, they called him the eagle eye prophet. Uh, he, he would actually see. He was, he, they, they, you know, the, the, the scholars, they say he was so bad that literally they said there's no way that one man could have wrote this whole book. <laughs> Uh, because he saw into places and things and spaces and time that literally he wouldn't have been able to know about unless God told him. There were some things that he wrote about. I mean, like literally Isaiah, he was the prophet that wrote about the suffering Savior before the Savior even came on the scene. He was the prophet that wrote about many things that would actually take place. In the future, he's one of the most quoted prophets throughout scripture. Uh, it, it, some similarities and some fun facts about the book of Isaiah is, is that Isaiah has 66 books, just like the Bible has 66 books. Uh, 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 literally, he was, he, he was married and he had children. And, and, and what he did was is he, he named his children after his two greatest sermons. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, his two greatest men, he said, oh, baby, I'm going to call you this. And, uh, and, and matter of fact, when we have another one, we're going to call him that. And literally, he was a man after God's own heart. But now today, Isaiah and David, they agree. And what are they saying? God is a good shepherd. Amen. Now, I don't know if he's shepherd in his life. But I know that they agreed on the Lord being a good shepherd. If you went to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, he says, And he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young, those that's pregnant. He gonna gently lead them. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna yah, yah, and get them to running real quick. He gonna gently lead them. He got, he got room for everybody. He knows how to handle every situation. Have you ever met somebody that can work with anybody? Have you ever met somebody that it seemed like no matter who they was dealing with, they was able to get in and, and, and do all right with whether they were fast or whether they were slow or, or whether they were weak or whether they were strong, they knew how to work with everybody. Uh, uh, well, literally, this is how the Lord is, that he, he knows how to work with everybody. He knows your circumstance, and he, he's already evaluated where you are. And sometimes we might think that the things that we're going through is because God is mad. God is, is not blessing me. God is not with me, and God is not for me. But I'm here to tell you today that Isaiah, he agrees with King David that the Lord is a good shepherd. Now, now, let's look at what Isaiah 40, 11 says that the, this, this, the Lord, being a shepherd, does. He says that uh, first, he feeds his flock. If there's a hunger, it will be satisfied. If there's a need, he's going to provide. He, he's not going to allow you to stay in a place of not having that which will cause you to be nourished. To be well developed and to do. The second thing that he says is, he says the Lord as a shepherd, what he does is he gathers his lambs. Where does he gather them? In his arms. Intimacy. Closeness. 
not long distant, that far away. Sometimes we see God as a, 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 a slumlord that has put us in his housing and left us with everything breaking down, everything not working right, everything not being able to be fixed on time. We got to wait and we got to suffer. No, he says, no, he's a little bit different than that because he gathers his flock into his arms. And then what it says is after he gathers them into his arms, what does he do? He brings them close. He carries them in his bosom. That means that he, he doesn't see them as a group. He doesn't see them as the 99, but he begins to see one, 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 one. As a matter of fact, I believe, listen, within my Holy Ghost imagination, I believe that he names them. Come here, Spotty. <laughs> Come here, Striped. Come here, Little Tail. Come here, right? Literally, he, he actually knows them with a greater knowing that they're not just one big bundle. And he's trying to get his units out. He's trying to get his, his, his quota in. He's seeing them with care. Amen. And then finally, he says, and gently he leads those that are with young and nursing young ones. Because what ends up happening is, is that sometimes, have you ever been in life, have you ever seen it, that, that people kind of see everything and everybody is being expendable? or disposable, or I'll use you until you're no longer useful. Oh no, no, that's not the God, the shepherd that we serve. He takes his time and he, he makes sure that you okay and, and, and you, you run ahead. You, you can go ahead because I got to tend to these back here. It's going to be all right, right? We're going to all make it, right? None left behind, right? Because he is a good shepherd. See, see, David says, he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, I shall not want, be in need. That means don't worry. The Lord has all your needs already met. He maketh me to lie in green pastures. Now, if you could imagine yourself being somewhere, they, 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 sometimes they do an exercise, they say, close your eyes. And think of the safest place that you just find the most comfort and rest. I, I, I could almost tell you that right now. Uh, if that was on the beach, if it's under your favorite tree, if, if it's in a room in your house with a certain light on, literally, uh, it, that, that, just imagine yourself in that place. That this is where he leads you to. He's not going to lead you to chaos. He's not going to lead you to confusion. He's not going to lead you to trouble. Amen. 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 We thinking that God want to rush us to some trouble so we can come out and give, and, right? Come out of trouble. Hallelujah. I just barely made it. And then he rushes back into some more trouble. That ain't what he doing. He ain't doing it like that. He moving a little bit slower than that. He said, come on. I want you to enjoy. I lead you to the green pastures. I lead you to a place of rest. I lead you to a place where you find yourself at ease. Oh, I'm not mad. I, I, I know the circumstances of life are that they're, they're, they're challenging. I, I know that they're happening, but I, I, I'm not leaving you there. I'm, I'm here to protect you. I'm here for you. I'm with you. Yes. Don't worry. I got all your needs already met. It, isn't it amazing that sometimes in life the problem that we're facing right now seems like the biggest problem that we've ever had? Like, like you, you, you had a problem last week and when that problem was over with, the new problem seems like the worst thing that could have ever happened to you in your life. But what if by faith we actually took on the idea that God is our shepherd and don't worry. God has got all my needs man. I, I, I can trust you. Uh, part of my faith, listen, you, if you around me long enough, you'll hear me. Sometimes I say that part of my faith is I will not worry. That is my faith. My faith is I will not worry, so Lord, you're going to have to handle that. 
It doesn't mean I'm not concerned. It doesn't mean I'm not thinking about it. It doesn't mean that I don't move towards the actions that I'm supposed to take to do what's right. But my faith is I will not worry. Amen. Amen. Because you're my shepherd. Yes. You got me. You know what's going on. I trust you. Yes. Have you ever been in a relationship with like that? With somebody that you can trust that, that no matter if they told you they was coming, they was coming. I don't care how long it looked like it took. They told you they was coming. They was coming. Uh, they, they told you I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, 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 and I'm talking about a real relationship where somebody wasn't fickle and changing their mind every five minutes. That they, I'm going to do it. Oh, something else came up. Got to go. No, but that you can trust his word. You can trust that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And then after you being able to trust, he leads us to green pastures. He leads us to the place where we can find rest. We're not worried about predators. We're not worried about those that would take advantage. We're not worried about those that would hinder us. Uh, why? Because he leads us to green pastures. He leads us to a place. And again, like I said earlier, sheep, they only sleep about four hours a day. But if you only sleep four hours a day, how many of y'all know that that four hours is important? Yeah, that, that, that four hours is really serious, right? If you don't get that four hours, you ain't going to be right. <laughs> You're going to be moody. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel right. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Just leave me alone. <laughs> if that four hours is all you get a day, you can't be trying to stay woke <laughs> to, see, to see what's going on. He leads us to the green pastures. John 10, 3. He call. John 10, 3 says that he calleth his own sheep by his name. Isn't that amazing? That, that God is so, he's so personal. That, that he's not seeing us as those that, 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 are, that are not uh, uh, connected to him. See, one of the things that we, we, we got to think about is, is that we uh, I know many of us have seen cowboy movies in the past. And, and we've seen them herd cattle across the land, right? You, you, you see cowboys, they get on horses, and when they want the cattle to stop moving fast, they get to riding around a circle, and they get to shooting guns, pow, 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 pow. And the dogs, you get to barking, woo, 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 and the cattle get to run. Western. That's our Western view of how this is done. Can, can I express to you that this is not the picture that we would see of the Lord dealing with his sheep? Uh, uh, because uh, what we see is, is that, that if we have that idea, then we see God, he, he's pushing us. He's pressuring us. He's forcing us. Right? Right? It doesn't seem very, it, it seems like he's going to get the job done, right? To get us from here to there. But let me give you an Easter worldview of how this looks. It, uh, what happens is Isaiah 52 and 12 speaks of an omnipresent Lord. He's our shepherd. He shall not want. He shall not want. The, the, Isaiah 52 and 12 speaks of an omnipresent Lord. Omnipresent, what does that mean? A great big word. It means that God is everywhere at the same time. So he's, he's not in the front alone. He's not just in the back. And he's not just in the middle, but he's all around us. Amen. He's with us. Uh, can, can I tell you that, 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 that the idea of, 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 of rustling cattle is not the idea that we get here. As a matter of fact, we get another image of that there used to be games that they would play because the sheep, the sheep they knew their shepherd's voice, right? And, and they were intimate with the shepherd and they wanted to be where the shepherd was. Why? Because the shepherd is good to them. And so at times, the shepherd would run ahead to the point that the sheep couldn't catch him. 
And then as they start running, like, oh, the shepherd's getting away. He's getting away. The shepherd would stop and the sheep would surround him like, don't leave us. Don't leave. It was a game. They were playing. That God is a loving God that he sees us as his children and he can play with us. He can have time with us. He can be intimate with us. He's not rustling. He's not, he's not pushing. He's not pressuring us to get to the next place. Amen. But he got time for us. Yeah. But sometimes we don't have time for him. Yes. Sometimes we don't have time. And we have to continue to make sure that we set ourselves to have time. He leadeth us beside the still waters. You know, running water for sheep is dangerous. Running water for sheep is dangerous. Uh, you, you, you see the, 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 the brooks and the waters flowing. Well, well, a, a shepherd, oftentimes what they would do is, is that if there is no still water, what they will do is they will build with rocks and different things, uh, 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 some type of barrier, or uh, yeah, some type of barrier to keep the water as still as possible where the sheep might come and drink. Uh, why, Pastor? Why is running water dangerous? And why would the shepherd do this in order to, to cause the sheep to be able to drink? Well, sheep wool is heavy. And if by any chance the sheep was to actually get wet for any reason at all, the sheep could actually drown. So he leads them beside still waters. He creates places where they might come and drink with safety. He wants to keep them from danger. Amen. The Bible says that he restores my soul. One of the things that we begin to see, the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. David, he calls the Lord his shepherd. Isaiah, he actually describes the shepherd's motive and what he does to actually make sure that the sheep are well. Can I say Psalms 91 gives us another example of what a good shepherd looks like? See, scripture continues to show us a picture of a loving God that is a shepherd in Psalms 91. If I was to do an outline of Psalms 91 right now, uh, 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 Psalms 91 verses 1 through 3, he would be a promise keeper. One that the sheep could take confidence in. Right? Uh, uh, Psalms 91 verse 4 through 7. He's a powerful protector. He keeps us from dangers. Psalms 91, 14 through 16. We have God's pledge of what he will do and how he will do it in our lives. We see that he's a God, he, he, he's, he's, he's our shepherd because he's a promise keeper. He's a powerful protector. God himself, he is our protector. He doesn't leave it to the work of others. Psalms 57 and 1, it says, Be gracious to me, O God. Be gracious to me, for my soul seeks refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until the ruinous storms pass. What we see in Psalms 57 and 1 is a picture of a bird, which alludes to the hen gathering her chicken under her wings. By natural instinct, she not only protects them, but calls them under that protection, drawing them in. When she sees them in danger, this is what she does. She keeps them saved, they are cherished, and she makes sure they're warm. This is an image of, of God being a great shepherd with a great heart for his people. We begin to see pictures of wings and feathers spread with great tenderness. Yet, 
that at times may seem to be easily broken through. But then God, what he does is he adds another verse to this. He says, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Why? Because he is a strong defense. God is willing to guard his people as the hen is to guard the chickens. As an able man is able to war with honor. God helps us by using prayer and his promises. The relationship that we find uh, in this expression is a communion of us praying and asking God and him answering with prayers. The relationship that we see here is those that live with God, those that dwell with God, and God continuously loves them. There is a deep longing or desire for the Lord that will continually take place because those that are loved, See, people, they, they, they got to say, they, they say, people don't know you care about them until they, you first show them you care. People that are loved, they have a great longing and desire. It is not by force. It is not by intimidation. It is not by pressure. But God is lovingly drawing us, his people in. Because God is not mad at us. God promises the righteous would only be, would only be spectators. To disaster around them. Why? Because they've made him their resting place. The Bible says in Psalms 91, no evil befall thee, no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. He will give his angels charge over thee. God charges his angels with the protection of the godly. And even their tents or their home. And what we begin to see, God gives us a pledge for those that are his children. In Psalms 91, verse 14 through 16, he says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name, verse 15. And he will call on me, and what will I do? And I will answer. Amen. I will be with him. Where? Where will he be with him? In trouble. Yes. So even while you're in the midst of your chaos, even while you're in the midst of your circumstance, God is even present there, and you don't even know that your problems could be worse. Your situation could be even more. But he's there with you. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him and with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a shepherd. Does this sound like an angry God? Mad at a people? God himself He's speaking words of comfort to the saints. God himself, he's declaring the mercy he has in store for them. The Lord announces his salvation to all who love him. To those who know his name. I want to encourage us. God is not mad at us and, and because he's not mad at us, we can have supreme confidence. That in when we live our lives, that we, we live our lifestyles in a way that is pleasing and honorable before him. I, I, I want us to be encouraged to not only live our lives like that, but to say it in our prayers. God, I trust you. You are my shepherd. You got me. You understand? You know how they all mean the same thing. I know you know me, Lord. And, and not as a cop out or excuse, you know me, Lord, I, I'm weak. No, we ain't talking about that, I, you know me, Lord. We're talking about you know me, Lord. And I trust you with my life. 
We want to find ourselves uh, uh, saying it with our mouths that our ears may hear it. The Bible says faith come by hearing and that our hearts might receive it. And that we would walk in true, sincere faith to God. Not afraid of trying to be, but walking with confidence to know who we are. God pronounces this pledge of protection. Over his people. And these are the things that he said. These are the conditions. These are the, these are the ways that he said that his people would actually know that they would receive this pledge of protection. He said, first of all, you got to know his name. The second thing is, he says, they have set their love upon me. And third, through prayer, they keep in co constant correspondence with the Lord. We can actually, if you've ever had any worry or concern about the Lord actually having good thoughts towards you or not, or whether you can trust the Lord with your life, I encourage you to go into prayer. You say, I did pray. Then I say, pray more. Because the more you pray, it increases your trust in God. Amen. When you begin to pray and ask God and, and, and say, God, that I place my dependence on you. God, I place my trust in your hands. I place my life in your hands. I place my circumstances in your hands. Because oftentimes, soon as we start worrying, that's when stuff starts going wrong. Soon as we start trying to fix them, have you ever tried to fix some stuff that was already messed up, but you, you ain't in the right mindset to even fix it, and now you're scrambling things up? But as soon as you stop worrying, yes. and say, God, I'm going to trust you. Sometimes we say in our mind, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it was too far gone, we, we're too deep. No, 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 that's the, especially the best time to go in. Yes. God, I trust you. And I need you to work this situation out. Amen. See, God says that if we delight ourselves in him, we, we have to find ourselves learning to, to, to love God, to, to love what he loves, to, to like what he likes, and to dislike what he don't like. As a matter of fact, the Bible says hate what he hates. God is not mad at you. We can have confidence that God's message of love in this Psalms is spoken to us. Yeah. But it's not spoken by us. This is not something that we created. This is not something that we made up uh, to, to, to comfort ourselves, but this is what he's saying to us. That God is pledging to give the gift of long life. But not only long life, but to give us salvation. His love towards us runs deep. And it does not run out. Even now, I believe that there are those under the sound of my voice that may have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Even at this time, I believe that you can actually confess the Lord. Ask the Lord to come into your life and he will save you. God is not mad at you. God has not cursed you. God has not taken his blessings from you. Sometimes we've done things that has caused us to become distant from God, but God has never left us. Salvation is God's idea. The Bible says that when we were yet sinners, when we were angry with God, enemies towards the Lord, when we told God, I don't need you, I don't want you, at that time, he sent Christ to die for our sins. 
His love is not dependent on how we feel. Because sometimes we say, I don't feel like God will receive me. I don't feel like God will take me. It's not based on how we feel. But it's based on his decision. Not by the will of man. Not by those that like you or dislike you. His mind has already been made up. That his anger is not kindled towards you, but he offers you his love. Will you pray this prayer after me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to change your life. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose, and rose again. Lord, Lord save, me. save me. I receive, I receive my, salvation my salvation now, now. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you now, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the condemnation the, 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 the guiltiness, yeah. the heaviness of sorrow and the, the overwhelming shame or embarrassment that might have been on someone's life has been lifted. Yeah. Thank I thank you even now, Lord God, that you're pouring the oil of joy on their lives. You're causing them to experience you in a way as never before. God, I thank you, Lord God. You're going to begin to change their perspective. You're going to begin to change their mindset. You're going to begin to change their outlook, Lord. Even the pictures in their minds, Lord God, that, that would cause them to remember where they've been, what's happened, and, and what's going on. God, I pray, Lord God, those things that bring trouble, those things that bring fear, those things that bring hurt, Lord God, begin to blur them. Begin to fade them out, oh God. Begin to take away, delete, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that have been hurt by those others in church, Lord, that, that find themselves no longer knowing why or if they can ever find themselves in the fellowship again, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would draw them nearer and cause them to know, oh God, that you're acceptive of them, Lord. And all they have to do is go back to their first words. Yes. Go back to the beginning when they first received you. Go back to the beginning when they first believed you. It's not about being uh, 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 this, this mature Christian. It's not about being on meat or milk. It's actually about you receiving him. Yes. It's your will, God. Not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit, oh God, we are changed. I thank you for transforming us beyond ourselves, beyond our strength, beyond our capability, Lord. We trust you, Lord, that you are capable and able to do these things. We say thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, listen, every time we pray that prayer, because I know somebody prayed that prayer, and when we pray that prayer, all I can say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All heaven rejoice. Listen, I want to encourage you, two things I want to encourage you to do. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is get you a Bible. You got to get you a Bible. If you're going to do this Christian thing, if you're going to be a real strong Christian, you got to get you a Bible. Amen. You want to find yourself listening to your Bible, reading your Bible. Listen, you want to get it where you can have it. You want to allow the Lord to actually begin to speak to your heart, begin to minister to you and cause you to know exactly uh, what you should be doing and how you should be living out your Christian faith. Then the second thing I'm going to encourage you to do is don't do it by yourself. Listen, you got to get with somebody. You need to be discipled. Amen. Come on. You need somebody to show you. You need somebody to walk with you. You don't need to do this, thing, this Christian faith alone. Amen. You want to find yourself walking with the other 
believers in walking in faith. Amen. I want to say thank you all for joining us. Listen, and finally, I want to say God bless you and keep you, and may he continue to cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.